Hey, welcome back to Shamanic Innovations. Yes, and for those of you wondering why we are putting on the headphones to make this into also a podcast, it's because I don't feel like saying this more than once. Hi. Hi, everyone. Um, I recently had a birthday. You know, celebrated year 42. And this is kind of a like promised, but I wanted to just kind of... Um, go through a few things that I've learned within this lifetime. Um, it's been, you know, kind of a challenge for me, you know, but this is something that I put together a few weeks back. In fact, some of you might even remember me reading a little part of this. Um, I actually put this together back in January. And, um, you know, if anyone's actually kind of familiar, I turned 42. It's normally that sort of Uranus and transit at opposite of our life's time. Um, some people might call it like an awakening time for many of us. You know, it's when we go through some sort of big event, you know, a big thing that kind of rattles us uh, during these years at 38 through 42 sort of period, 36 even for some, 45 for others. Um, but, you know, it's, like I said, it's kind of that mid, middle of life um, reemergence, you know, where we kind of take stock of ourselves. And, you know, these are just some things that I found within my stocking time. Um, you know, some happy, some sad, and, you know, just, you know, some things where, you know, I'm looking back and I'm like, well, you know, I, I can't really change what happened back then, but I can kind of move forward and hopefully just have, you know, parts of my life that would be a lesson, you know, maybe for myself or for others. Um, you know, maybe there is someone out there who listens to this and they gain some sort of insight as far as something they should be doing with their life in the future. Maybe there's someone who, you know, can look at this or, you know, hear this and, you know, um, I actually made a point, you know, this is all stuff that's typed out. It's um, currently on my Tumblr and uh, Facebook, though the Facebook might have got lost through the hundreds of people who were saying happy birthday, which I, before I even get into any of that, I am so grateful for those people, you know, people took time out of their day just to, you know, say hi, um, which, you know, I, I know that with social media, it's kind of that reminded Oh, there's a birthday box in the corner, but even with that, you don't have to take that time out, you know. And I know, you know, yeah, you see the post there, and, you know, there's one of me, the profile picture is actually in my birthday suit, you know, with me as a baby. Um, kind of funny, you know, it's like, well, I'm happy that, you know, I didn't get, you know, somebody complained about it being, you know, a naked child on Facebook because it's me. <laughs> And you're really not seeing anything other than my bare booty um, as a baby. <laughs> Which is a cute booty as a baby. Um, but yeah, you know, you see the birthday suit there. You see the post. There's another one. It's like, only accepting good vibes and money. Um, which I am so grateful for the people who actually, you know, gave me $4.20 um, since I was turning 42 years of age. You know, that buys a cup of tea sure but that's also just somebody thinking of you somebody actually you know somebody getting the joke really more than anything um you know you're asking for four dollars and twenty cents yeah well, i'm turning 42 this year why not you know i can go take that four dollars and twenty cents and you know go buy a cup of tea for a homeless guy somewhere also you know so that's you know paying it for it in itself but it's good things but you know, enough with all of that, you know, and the people, as I said, who were, you know, kind enough, the happy birthday, you know, and even, you know, cards that I received in the mail, you know, things are time gifts. These are more important than any sort of cash. Um, you know, people taking the time out the call. The phone's been kind of busted for the last couple of days, so I didn't get a chance to actually take those phone calls, but I did get messages, you know, from, in, not even, you know, helps out there. Hey, you send somebody a voicemail. You think people don't really listen to voicemails anymore, but they do. So, Aunt Lisa, you know, I got your voicemail. Thank you. Kevin, got it. Thank you. Um, you know, but 
even with all of that there, there had been some just build up that I've had before. You know, stomach's kind of in knots just from um, kind of the build up of that and just build up of life. Uh, I think that when we have difficult moments going on in our lives, it's kind of easy to let things like a birthday amplify them and really get caught up in all of that. And, you know, for me, it's more of a case of, hey, this is going to be a new chapter. You know, it's like with anything else. It's going to be a new start. Um, so I got up that day. It was Wednesday. And Jupiter actually went into retrograde on Wednesday. Um, it's also National Sibling, Siblings Day, oddly enough. But, you know, Jupiter going into retrograde. I'm, you know, enough into astrology to know, hey, retrogrades are big enough deal if we want to make them that and Jupiter's a big enough deal as a planet if we want to make it that um you know and one of the things with astrology you have to kind of take it as a grain of salt that it is but also know that hey you can make changes based on that salt you know salt in itself yeah it's used in flavor if you have too much of it it can kill you but just the right amount is what you need in your body you know and it's like that with everything else so um, I'm going to use that transit, you know, that, you know, change there into the uh, retrograde for Jupiter as being a time to, you know, kind of kick forward on some new projects in my life, kick forward on some changes, um, you know, take the lessons that I've learned 41, you know, years and whatever ago and make this the new start where I can, you know, take stock and try to move forward so with that you know 42 things here and who knows maybe I'll be lucky enough and you know to read this list 42 years from now um, you know or even just a year from now just be lucky enough to add to this list with a new thing that I've learned so um, we want we can uh, get started with visual action so that we know that we're actually reading from pages here you know we have a a good a couple pages here, yeah. Two, three, yeah, it's a stop. So here we go. 42 things I've learned by age 42. Number one, start somewhere. I think that's pretty self-explanatory. <laughs> Number two, clean up after yourself. Um, that's kind of a good thing, you know, just in our daily lives. Yes, you need to, you know, clean your room, clean your house, whatever, but also clean up your life, you know. We tend to make a mess of things at some point we have to you know straighten those messes up number three be thankful take a moment each day each hour if you need to you know but be thankful for where you're at the good and bad um you know if you're a praying person don't just pray for stuff you know don't just treat god as santa <laughs> but actually take a moment and be like hey you know thanks for the trials and tribulations even. Hey, you know, thank you for the roof, even if it is leaking, you know, and the knowledge to go repair it type of thing. You know, be thankful for where you're at. You know, be thankful for the food, the, you know, everything. Be thankful. Number four, kind of on that same thing, remember where you came from. Um, I've been lucky enough to, you know, with my journey here, be able to take some time and take little road trips back to Palaka, you know, for a visit. And it's a good reminder of where I've come from, you know, as far as being able to see, you know, kind of the strife and barbity of that town. And, you know, and it's something that I've, you know, made a point to kind of share with everyone. Hey, listen, you know, I've come from nothing. Um, but, you know, also in that, just knowing where you've come from, you know, on other aspects, knowing where you've come from as far as your career goes. You know, if you've been working at a job for how many ever years, hey, that's how many ever years. You know, you had to start somewhere. You walked in day one, even, you know, a couple months or whatever. You walked in day one and didn't know anything, and now you know everything. So remember where you came from, you know, it gives you room to grow there. Uh, one thing I actually like to do is go back and, you know, I'll actually read those memory posts. Not because I want to wallow in that pain, but because I want to be able to take stock. I'm going to find a year, you know, whatever year back and moment. And be able to say, hey, listen, 
I've come from that depth to be a better person. So remember that. Uh, number five, and I actually, let me see, I kind of crossed that out a couple times to make sure I got the wording right. You are not defined by your pain. Um, it's something that we all kind of forget at some point in time, but you are not defined by that thing that's holding you down, that's holding you back, that thing that hurt you. You're not defined by that. You're stronger, you're bigger, you're better than that. Number six, mistakes will happen. They're going to happen. Deal with it. Learn how to overcome that. Learn how to, you know, become a better person. Uh, we have mistakes all the time at work. Uh, one thing that actually happened, this was not my mistake, by the way, I'm so happy to say it. But um, we had a package that aired tonight, and during that, you know, a lady was saying in the background, this is some bullshit. And if you know anything about television, that last little word should have got a nice little bleep on it. It didn't. So the person who put that together... They had to come out and apologize, you know, and, um, you know, I mean, we, we have to do some corrections here. We have to go through and, you know, that was a mistake that happened. They have to deal with it. And yeah, that's a big but small mistake. And as I said, that's not my mistake, thankfully. But even in that, you know, that teaches me, hey, listen, mistakes are going to happen. You got to roll through it. You got to keep going. You know, that mistake happened and that was on air. And you could have either stopped down the whole show and cried about it, or you can kept rolling, kept moving on, you know, go to weather, go to do whatever else you need to do, commercial break, come back, do your apology, and move on. So, mistakes happen, deal with it. Number seven, listen. That's right, I stopped talking for a second. Listen. That's right, you can hear the dog chewing over there. Listen. And that's the important word there. Take a moment and just listen. Whatever, you know, stop talking. Stop talking for a second. That's right, the AC just caught on. Listen. Listen to what's going on around you. Listen to, listen to even what you're saying. Derek, listen to what you're saying. Stop talking. Stop talking, Derek. Listen. That's right, I just turned around and told myself in the mirror. Listen. Number eight, create something every day. I don't think I should have to explain this by now, but do it. You know, and it doesn't have to be art, it doesn't have to be music, it doesn't have to be a kid, it doesn't have to be, you know, a million dollars, whatever. Creating some can be some, you know, something as simple as making yourself a meal inside of your kitchen. It can be something as simple as washing the dishes so that you have clean forks and plates to whatever to create with. But create something each day. Get out of your bed and create something. Number nine, and I kind of made this into the quote, but whatever. Physician, heal thyself. Um, it's one of those things that I've kind of had on the stress of myself, you know, during my own healing process here is, you know, taking the time to actually make myself better. Um, you know, one thing that I've always kind of said is, hey, you know, I can't really love anyone else. I can't really be good for anyone else. I can't work for anyone else, whatever. Unless I can do this for myself. Unless I can actually love myself. Um, and, you know, everyone has that sort of argument on that, if it's good or bad to say. But for me, it's worked. You know, hey, I have to actually learn to do things, you know, learn to love myself and all these aspects, you know, so that I can love others. Um, I've had to actually, you know, learn these different things so that I can help others with them. Um, you know, and it's also understanding, hey, you know, not all things can be self-healed. Um, you know, a lot of us are dealing with, you know, our anxiety or depression or PTSD type issues, you know. And I am no mental health professional, <laughs> obviously. And I'm probably not the most, you know, healed person, but... I understand with that, hey, you know what, it's a growth process, I have to actually get off the couch and actually, you know, do these things for myself, and then at the same time also, hey, you know what, there are professionals out there who can help, you know, give you advice, give you whatever, um, but that first step is you, so the physician has to heal himself. Number 10, your practice becomes your performance. Um, this is more of a music thing that I learned at you know, 8, 10, and it's kind of stuck with me forever. You know, if you're going to play the piano, your practice becomes a performance. If you're going to play the tuba, your practice becomes your performance. If you're going to sing, your practice becomes your performance. If you're going to DJ, yeah, you got to spend a lot of hours scratching. 
because your practice becomes your performance. And that rings true outside of the music world with everything that you do. You know, if you are going to be a sh marksman, you got to shoot guns every day, you know, and hit that target. Your practice becomes your performance, <laughs> okay? I, if you're going to be a professional dog walker, you got to go out and walk a lot of dogs because your practice becomes your performance. This, you know, I can't really explain that. Number 11, tell people you love them while you can. Seriously, people are dropping like flies out there, okay? Folks are dying left and right. You have someone you love, tell them you love them. It's not even about death. It's more just about, you know, just having that moment. You might just end up not seeing this person ever again. If you fall for someone, let them know, you know. Who knows, you, you know, whatever. You might lose that moment and then, you know, you don't tell this person something and they don't hear it, so they go on and they just believe that you never did. And then they go on to somebody else. Tell that person you love them. With that. You know, and it's not just the, you know, romantic, you know, your friends. Tell your friends you love them, please. Please tell your friends. I love my friends. I tell them all the time. Tell your friends you love them when you have that opportunity. Tell the person you love them when you can. Where am I at? Number 12. Change happens. <laughs> it can't always... Wait. Change happens. You can't always fight it. Um, I've tried to fight change a few times in my life. You know, more, lost change especially. I've tried to fight a few times. And what I found is that when I just go with it, it happens better. You know, if I just go on vacation and I don't really make a ton of plans and I'm not like, I have to, you know, have every moment, a vacation so much better. If I just go leave my house and yeah you know there's some things you probably should plan your grocery trip you probably should write a list you know because you're either going to come home with nothing or you're going to come home with a bunch of junk but you know some things in life are going to change and you just have to let that happen number 13 this is really simple be a good human okay i don't care there's that old saying if your religion teaches you to hate someone pick a new religion because all the religions I've checked, you know, pretty much say the same thing, which is to be a good human, okay? I don't care if you're a Christian. I don't care if you're a Jew. I don't care if you're a Muslim. I don't care if you're an atheist. If, great. Even science says to be a good person, okay? Fuck, I don't care if you're a devil worshiper. Even Satan himself is going to be like, you know what? Just be a good human. I, 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 you know, hell's kind of full. I don't really feel like dealing with you right now. Just be good instead, okay? Be a good human. It's that simple, okay? Done, you know. Number 14. I think this is one of the few times I actually quote a song lyric for this one. Um, and points for anyone who can guess it. Love is whatever, whatever you want it to be. <sighs> I, I, and yeah, I'll, I'll go ahead and say it. I miss him daily. Mostly because I still miss her daily. But, you know, if I had to listen... You know, one thing that I learned from him, hey, love is whatever you want it to be. You know, that's something I learned even before, you know, that all happened. Yeah, love is whatever you want it to be. You know, if you want love in your life, if you want these things in your life to be good, it's that. If you want to, it's that. It's what you want it to be. So make it that. Um... Number 15, this is probably the hardest lesson that I've had to learn within my lifetime. I am still learning it on a daily basis. I screw this one up all the time, but I, it's just going to keep coming back. Don't spend all your money on foolishness. You know, there's things that we need in life, obviously food, air, water, sex, and sleep. And then there's everything else. And even with the food, air, water, sex, and sleep, we probably don't need... You know, the super king size bed with the super pillows. And, you know, we don't need the Brevier, whatever, mega water. And, you know, don't spend all your money on foolishness. There's going to tell me time when you actually need that. Save something. You know, I'm the worst, probably, you know, the example of this. But I'm just going to, you know, as I said, some of these things are just me giving you the example. Don't spend all your money on foolishness. Save something. You're going to need it at one day. You will need that cash that you spent earlier, yesterday, whatever. You'll need that. Okay, I didn't actually, 
I think I just bought myself dinner tonight, but even with that, yeah, you won't need that, buddy. Sit, don't spend your money on foolishness. <sighs> Number 18, have dreams and pay attention to them. Those dreams are going to be important. Those dreams are going to save your life. Those dreams are going to come back for you every single time. If you have them and you pay attention to them. You know, I remember actually as a kid, I would have nightmares and I would, I, I can remember praying for the longest, you know, part of my now I lay me down to sleep was, I don't want to have dreams because of the nightmares, you know, and really I should say, I don't want to have nightmares, but you know, I want to have dreams. Um, but it's even that awakened life. You have, you know, those things that come back to you and, you know, I, I you know, I remember actually I was having a conversation again earlier today. And, you know, it was actually with my boss at the time. And he's like, you know what? I just some kind of light bulb just kind of dinged off in my head. But you would probably be perfect as a radio host. And I'm thinking to myself, yeah, that's not the first time I've thought about this because it's kind of been a dream of mine. So, okay, let's go home and plug that podcast in and get back to that dream. Remember those dreams because they're going to come back to you. Pay attention to them. Number 19, this is like in a three-part little deal here. Sing along. Dance like nobody's watching. Play like a kid. You know what? Just have fun. Have fun with whatever you're doing. Yeah, sing along with the music. Who cares if you're getting all the notes wrong? I sing songs all the time. Don't know the words to them. Can't tell you how many times I have screwed up Raspberry Beret during karaoke. You know what? You want to know why I started doing Raspberry Beret and, Beret and karaoke? I just said it wrong right there. You want to know why I started doing it? In karaoke one because it's one of the few songs you can find by Prince that's actually in a karaoke machine and two so I could actually learn the words to the song because I was screwing up you know, yeah yeah blah, 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 blah. they've had to do be at harm the back and ride and blah 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 and down my old man Johnson stone mm -hmm. yeah say now overcast days never turn me on but blah blah on the mm -hmm. I, I had to learn all that yeah mm-hmm just sing along. Who cares? Who cares if you screwed it up? Dance? You know, I do the freaking white guy bop. Who cares if I'm not white? I don't care. And then I'll do like the rapey little thing here. And, you know, I don't really try to like break my back anymore with back spins and, you know, break dance and stuff. You know, but I'll do whatever. Just dance. Who cares? I care. I'll do it in my boxers around the house. Don't really care. Nobody's watching. And I'll do it in the middle of a nightclub. Still don't care. Play like a kid. Have fun. Have fun, okay? You're gonna be dead soon. Drink water, have fun, okay? Hopefully not soon, but you know, have fun, play like a kid. Number 20, not everyone's going to agree with you. This is something that, you know, we've all had to learn, especially anyone who survived 2016. And, you know, for a lot of us who didn't get the outcome we wanted with that year, especially with that election, Still gives me nightmares. Every time I open up Facebook, there's a little, you know, traumatic. Hey, not everyone agreed with me. Now we have this. You know, and I'm not even going to, you know, go into all that. But even, you know, outside of that there, not everyone's going to agree with you. There are all sorts of issues out there. There's issues on what you should feed your dog, what type of water you should drink, what type of diet you should have, how many hours of sleep you should get, who you should be fucking. Not everyone's going to agree with all that. It's not your job to even make them agree with you. Not everyone's going to agree with whatever I have to say in this podcast. These are 42 things I learned in my lifetime. I'd be damned. Nobody's going to agree with half this stuff here. Whatever. Still my lessons. Number 21. This is a really important lesson for everyone. <laughs> going to laugh reading it. Don't just laugh it off. Learn to laugh at everything in life, but dot 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 don't just laugh it off and this is you know this is a big one because um one we tend to stop laughing at a bit you know because we we see life as being way too serious and we get bogged down in the doom and gloom of things you know especially when it comes to our own lives and there's so much that it's just like you know what just, just shake it off just just laugh it off ha ha but at the same time, and the reason why I put the other part first, don't just laugh it off. You know what? There are going to be those important things that you can't just 
let go. You know, you can't just say, well, I need to, you know, eat today, but <laughs> no, you got to eat. You know, some things are important. Some things are, you know, happen. Sometimes people do die. And you have to actually, you know, grieve and mourn. You know, sometimes you do lose a job. Sometimes you do break up with someone. You know, it's really that kind of double-edged sword. I got into doing a lot of sarcastic comedy um, when I had my divorce. And it became a thing of, hey, how much can I throw, you know, how much can I bend that, you know, railing there? How far can I push the envelope? And I got into watching comedians who push the envelope and do things. And one thing, you know, that I really kind of learned from that is that a lot of that comedy is built out of pain. Um, you know, you, the funniest of comedians are the ones that end up, you know, they have the drug overdose, they have the heart attack from doing whatever, or they end up, you know, Robin Williams, it's my, one of my favorite comedians. We all know what happened. I don't even have to say it. Reason why? It's too funny, you know? Um, and, you know, and uh, there's another person I just miss on a daily basis, but there's a lesson to be learned there. You know, you can't just laugh everything off, folks. You know, deal with it, live with it, learn from it. Um, but what you can laugh at, please, by all means, laugh at. Please, by all I'll probably go put him on after this here, just to kind of get myself a little laugh time, especially after reading this one here. Uh, we're at 22. <laughs> 22. You're allowed the September roll with life. And I actually put with grief, but it's with life. Um, there's a story behind this. It's kind of why I want to do a video. 2006, was it still? No, 2017, I think we were actually. Yeah, 2017, September 2017. Um, Hurricane Irma was getting ready to batter down on us here in Florida. And, you know, I knew I had a lot of work going ahead of me with the hurricane coming, really stressed out about that. And I could feel that it was going to be a stressful one. But before that, I had tickets to see my favorite band play live. That's right. Forgive me. Forgive me, please, fans of the revolution. Forgive me, three, please, fans of the new power generation. Forgive me, please, third eye girl fans. And actually now meeting people involved with these bands and, you know, side project. Forgive me, band members even. Forgive me, Foo Fighters. Okay? The favorite band is Green Day. It always has been, always will be. So I'm going to see them live again. And if anyone's familiar with Green Day, they have a ton of material, a ton of albums. You know, they've traveled the world. They've done, you know, opera, Broadway shows, and, you know, just all sorts of things. You know, three little punk guys from San Francisco Bay love these guys. So they're doing their concert, and, you know, it's at the end of the show. And they're doing, like, the triple encore, you know, fireworks and explosions. And I'm there with my buddy. It's his first time going. And he's like, oh, man. Sure, the show's about to end. I'm like, wait a second, there's stuff to play, and I have to stop myself for a second. Because I was like, well, what do you mean there's stuff to play, Derek? They ain't got to play anything for you, you know? And probably coincidence. You know, it's probably coincidence that this did not happen. Because, like I said, it's the end of the show. They've already done like a triple encore. You can only go till, you know, right before 11 o'clock. It's a school night. I think it was like a Wednesday for Pete's sake. So, you know, they can't go late. They're in an amphitheater. You know, and like I said, I've already seen these guys. This is like my fifth or sixth show, you know. Great. And I know the venue. You know, I've been there, did three straight years of Dave Matthews, what I call no, cr no crash, acoustic crash, and electric crash. Three years. So I know the venue, you know. Bands change up their stuff all the time. Shouldn't have been an issue. But I had to stop myself because I'm like, wait a second, he still has to play Wake Me Up Till September Ends. And then I'm like, wait, he didn't play shit for me. You know, again, could be a coincidence, but could also be the fact that he didn't decide to play it that night because, you know, maybe he didn't want to sing about his dead dad in the middle of September. <laughs> maybe it just happened to, you know, I, 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 you don't owe me shit. You know, and that's the thing. That's something I had to kind of learn. It's like, wait, you don't know anybody anything, really, in life. <laughs> You're allowed that rule. You're allowed a September, you know. I, I kind of call it the September rule, in a sense, because, um, 
you know, for me, it was a case of, hey, if you want to get away from, you know, something for a second, you're allowed. Um, you know, if I don't want to listen to something, you know, last year, actually, I did a Prince Free April. You know, instead of, oh, I'm going to go and play the same, you know, the last thing I wanted to do with my April last year, and, you know, I've kind of stretched it out a little bit, you know, but last year especially i didn't want to listen to you know purple rain last april i don't want to listen to nothing compared to you i don't want to listen to sometimes it snows in april i'm sorry i'm allowed to not september rule you know you're allowed to have that you're allowed to kind of push things away you're allowed to have your own you know sorts of deals with that uh, 23 strong people cry they do it all the time and i've said 24 Drink water. 25. Let them do what they want. Do you. Who cares whatever they have to say, where they're going. If everybody jumps off the bridge, you go and do it too. My mom used to actually say that. I was like, um, not really. So, yeah. Let them do whatever they want. You do you, buddy. Number 26. Gifts of time and love are worth way more than money. Thank you, Tiffany. Gifts of time and love are worth way more than money. Way more. Don't get me wrong, money is good, great. Please hit my Cash App, please hit my Vimo, please hit my PayPal, whatever. Money is wonderful. I love, mm, very much. Please give me money. But you know what? You have some time you can give me. You have a, something you personally made. You have, you know, something that you, some whatever time that's worth way more you want to make me a meal worth way more than money okay 29 once in a while call and check in even visit if you can you know i still have some calls i want to make you know from this past week as i said the phone's been kind of crazy but even without that just take a moment you know check in with people you know we all live in these little boxes by ourselves and you know, it's very easy to kind of think that you're checking in because you like somebody's thing on their Facebook. No, actually take the time and message them. You know, ask them how they're doing. What's the saying? Check on your strong friend. Maybe I'll go share that as a meme afterwards. But yeah, check in with people. Okay, check in with your family. Check in with your friends. I used to have this thing when my mom was alive. I would call her every Tuesday after uh, Tuesday evening when I would take my break. Might call any other time, you know, a week or whatever, but I would always make sure to call on Tuesday. There's something I even developed just, just so I had a time to check in. So I knew, okay, I know you're home. I know I'm around. I can call you. Boom. Take some time, check in. Where am I at? 30. Words can haunt you forever if you let them. Okay? You can hear somebody tell you that you are a stupid little brat. And that can haunt you when you're five, and that can haunt you when you're 35. That can haunt you when you're 85, if you let them. Okay, you let those words get inside of your head, they will destroy. You know, and it's also the words, you can say something to somebody, you can call someone a bitch, you can call someone an ass, whatever. And that's gonna haunt you for, you know what haunts me actually? <laughs> I'll tell you something that actually kind of haunted me. Last year, um, I actually didn't go to work this year for my birthday just because this happened last year. Last year, I didn't even get to say the words that he haunted me. Um, one of my dear friends at work, you know, came in. She's like, hey, you know, it's your birthday. I got a surprise for you. And all I had to say was, I don't like ice cream. Get anything but ice cream. That's all I had to say. And I didn't say that. And that haunted me. And I'm like, and you know, she walks out. I'm like, oh. God, it's hard not to get ice cream. And then they come back and guess what they had for it? They had an ice cream cake. And I'm like, well, maybe I'm the stupid one who just doesn't like, you know, I'll try the cake. And I try the cake again, still don't like ice cream. And she's like, oh, yeah, there's a big cake in the back. I'm like, thanks. You know, and I'm just kicking myself for not saying, not speaking up there. That throat chakra got closed for a second. I was like, oh, yeah, thank you. Speak up. Say what you need to say, you know. Words are going to haunt you if you let them. Words that you don't say will haunt you if you let them. Okay, so yeah. <laughs> Number 31, thrive. Don't just survive. It's something that we 
especially we in the black community, we've just been in survival mode, I think, forever. I know I've been in survival mode forever. You know, as great as Elworth Kearney was, she taught me survival mode. And I have been in it, especially since she's left this earth. You know, and it's just some, hey, don't just strive. I mean, don't just survive, thrive. You know, make yourself better. You know, find something that's gonna make you better. You know, it, you know, even if it isn't like, you know, the world's greatest paying job, whatever, find something that's gonna make you happy. Something that's gonna make you thrive as a person. You know, money's, what was the movie? Um, I think it's the movie Blow, actually. But he says like, money's not real, it's only paper, okay? Yes, you need to eat, you need to live, whatever. But you also need to thrive. So find those things in life that are going to make you thrive, not just survive. Oh, maybe I should keep the card so I can keep track of where I'm at here, huh? Okay. Number 32. The thing that, trigger, thing that triggers your fear is where you must work in order to truly heal. Okay. If you have something that is triggering you to be upset, it's triggering you to be angry, you know, this is the first spot that you need to start on your healing journey. If it's, you know, some someone that you really don't want to talk to, someone that's, that's where you need to begin. Just my advice there. 33, if one person says you're an asshole, maybe they, you know, maybe they have a problem. If everyone says you're an asshole, maybe you're an asshole. Maybe, you know, one person says that bad thing, you know, one person says that you smell funny, one person, you know, maybe they have an issue. Because a lot of times people will say some really fucking crapped up shit about you. A lot of times they're going to, you know, put you down, not because you need to be knocked down that pig, but because they feel, you know, there's something inside of them. A lot of times it's that mirror, you know, and they're just saying whatever it's you instead of saying it's that mirror. You're awesome. You are awesome, by the way. I need to go say that to that person. I'm, you know, get into that sort of negative that space there. But a lot of times we'll say that sort of negative. You know, like, oh yeah, you're horrible. Ah, you know, when really, it's, yeah, we should be saying it to ourselves. You're awesome, by the way. Um, yeah, you're awesome too. But hey, listen. If everyone, if everyone says that you smell funny, if everyone says that your breath stinks, maybe you need to go brush your teeth. You know, if everyone says that your zipper is undone, maybe your zipper's undone. You need to go zip up. You know. Everyone saying you're an asshole, guess what? <laughs> you know, you, number 34, you, you, you are your own best friend and your own worst enemy. Uh, it might be a little redundant for something, but you know what? Hey, you're the ones in control here. So you can either be, you know, your biggest cheerleader or you can be your biggest hindrance. Yeah, that's your choice. You are your own best friend and your own worst enemy. Number 35. I got another tongue loop for this. Life is just a party and parties were not meant to last. No, they were not. Mm -mm -mm. Um, and I am not just talking about death. I am really talking about parties. <laughs> like, um, you know, I said earlier, please have fun. You know, go out dancing, do whatever you need to do, bring a smile to your face. Uh, understand at some point, though, you know, you have to get serious. Um, I think there's like a Bible verse, you know, something like, you know, when I was a child, I spake as a child, or I spoke as a child, I walked as a child, I tied my shoes as a child, whatever, blah, 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 great. And then when I became adult, I put the childish stuff away. You know. Um, and, you know, I've dealt with actually throwing parties, you know, as far as, you know, being a DJ and promoter and things of that nature and organizer and stuff like that. Um, parties are organized chaos, really. You know, if you do it right, it is organized chaos because, you know, you got to get people in, they got to drink, they got, you know, or eat or whatever. They have to have their fun, you know, entertainment for these people while they're here. You got to get people, you know, to come to you and be entertained and leave, <laughs> you know? I got to count that money at the end of the night. It's not meant to last. Now, if we want to expand that out, yes, your life, have as much fun as you can with your life and know that you are not going to live forever. Not meant to last, you know. 
maybe you need to go do some of those other things. You know, maybe you should save a little bit and not spend every dime on foolishness. Or maybe you should listen, you know, while you're at the party. I know it's kind of loud or whatever. Be sure to drink water. Don't just drink beer. You know, somebody's going to be crying in the corner. Maybe because they had too much Starbucks, you know, or they heard, you know, some song or whatever, need to go running out the room. Maybe they broke their foot dancing because they were dancing too crazy. But you know what? That party's not going to last forever. It's cool, though. You know, we'll be fine with it. Number 36, worst case scenario. <laughs> worst case. I, I don't know if anyone actually um, watches the show This Is Us. I need to catch up at some point once I can get my fire stick re um, jailbroken. Um, but there's a couple that I love from there. They do this little game where they do worst case scenario before walking into it. You know, it's like, worst case scenario. The kids are, you know gonna kill us in our sleep and then the other was like yeah worst case scenario the kids don't kill us in our sleep they just burn the house down okay cool let's go have sex you know whatever they are talking about <laughs> yeah get that worst case scenario just get it out the way okay if you already know what your worst case is just get it out the way that way you can just go on with life okay hope for the best prepare for the worst everything else that happens is fucking gravy Worst case scenario, it all goes wrong. They say no, you end up dead. You should still do it. <laughs> okay, this is number 36. Worst case scenario, it all goes wrong. They say no when you ask them out. They say no when you ask for the promotion, whatever. Worst case, you end up dead. You end up in jail. You end up broke. You end up home. Worst case, whatever. You should still do it. Okay, otherwise, you're going to live with regret. Period, point blank. Still go to that party. Even if it's not going to last, still go. Because otherwise you're going to sit at home and regret yourself eating bonbons, okay? Still, you know, still cry. Because otherwise you're going to sit there all, should I cry? No, go ahead and cry. Worst case scenario, you cry out all your tears and, you know, your tear ducts dry up and you're never able to cry again. You still got it through, okay? <laughs> Number 37. Learn to say yes, no, please, and thank you. tell you how you know but yeah learn it live it learn it love it yes no please and thank you you learn those four things you are cake i'm gonna try to wrap this up here because i know i'm losing battery on the uh what i'm gonna call it number 38 look just above the heads of the audience they will think you're looking right at them this is an old singing trick and you'll get distracted by some focal point off you there you know just look right up there you know Put your shoulders back, look up, right above that headline, find your little, you know, thing. Be cool. You got this. You know. They don't need to know who, you know, how nervous you might have inside of you. Just look right above them. Look right past them. You got this. Number 39. People see a lot more in you than you do in seeing yourself. They will look to you for support, advice, and wisdom. You will not understand all of this at the time. Just give them an honest answer. If you don't know what to say, say that. If you say the wrong thing, still say it. Whatever you say is what's needed to be said at that moment. Please speak. Take that to heart. Number 40. Don't trade your future for a moment. Like, Young men, especially, do not trade your future for a moment. Don't, you know, I know she looks good. She got those boobies or whatever. But, yeah, don't, yeah. I, I, I know you can make, like, a bunch of money real quick. You know, but, yeah, don't trade your future for a moment, okay? Number 41. 41. Find one thing to get really good at doing. And then find a few others, just to be sure, you know. We all have a talent inside of us. Acting, singing, painting, whatever. You know, talking, writing, saving lives, cooking, whatever. We all have something that we're really good at doing. Find that one thing. You know, practice it. Make your practice, your performance on it. Find that one thing. Just keep doing it. And then, you know what? Just be sure. Find a couple of other things that you could try out. Just so that you are, you know, sure that that's the one thing that you are good at. Especially if you're not 100% sure. Yeah, try everything. Try everything twice, as I'd say, just to make sure you didn't like it the first time. Kind of like ice cream. 
And then 42. <laughs> you will be tested in life to see if this is what you really want. You know, and this is true with every, this is true with your relationships. You meet someone and you're like, man, I really love her. I really love him. They are wonderful. Well, you know what? That's what your ex is calling you up right now. Just to make sure that this is what you really want. You're going to see that job out there. You're going to be like, man, I really want to work there. You know what? That's why that old job's calling up there. Um, it's kind of funny. I uh, was listening to this talk by Alan Watts actually earlier. And I fuck, couldn't remember half of what he said. But he did go into this one line that I guess he heard from someone. You know. <laughs> if you ever want to change your life, don't give the devil any heads up of what you're doing. Like, yeah. You know, because if you're like, hey, you know what? I'm going to go do this great, you know, trip here around the world or whatever. This is when all the people you owe money to is going to come calling you up. Like, hey, so you owe me a bunch of money. You're going somewhere. You want to pay me first? Or, you know, this is like if you're like, man, I'm not going on that road trip. That's why your car just broke down. You know, you get that flat tire because you were all excited. Get, you know, instead of getting all excited, I'm like, yeah, I'm going on a trip. Get mini excited, get your, you know, get the oil change, get everything kind of prepped up so you can go on that trip. You know, take yourself in pieces if you need to. Take yourself in parts if you need to. You know, take that one step, one day, one hour at a time if you need to. Because once you do find that goal, once you're like, man, I want that job, or man, I want that girl, or man, I want that car, or man, that's when you're going to have those tests come through. Okay, it, it's that simple. It's like, man, I really want this podcast. That's when you're going to get lazy. Um, he was saying, actually, his thing. It's like, you know, that's why people, with you know, they start these big exercise routines at the beginning of the year, and then they get sick, like, two weeks later, or they get hurt two weeks later. And I know I've done it. You know, I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm going to go start boxing, and I throw up my shoulder and, you know, hurt my back, whatever, and I can't box anymore, you know, because I got all excited instead of, you know... I'll start with something small, you know, maybe I'll get like, you know, this here, I'll watch a video, I'll try doing that, you know, today, and then I'll try doing it again tomorrow, and then I'll try doing it again tomorrow, you know. It says if you're going to, you know, work out, yeah, work, you know, make a plan to work out tomorrow. Don't make a plan to work out for 365 straight days, you know, one full year. Make a plan to work out each individual day. Make a plan to eat better each individual day. Make a plan to live better each individual day, Okay. That way you do reach that goal. That way you do accomplish that. You know, because you are going to, the second that you say, that's my goal, something's going to come along and test you for it. And with that, I should probably uh, charge the phone and walk the dog and all that sort of fun stuff there, get off the work clothes. So um, I'm going to end this here, Shamanic Innovations. Um, thank you all for joining. And remember, you know, the famous words here, you got this, folks. Peace out, let the Girl Scout. Later. Okay, hit that one too.